This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Americans All, Immigrants All by the United States Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 1. The Programs and Their Purpose The Americans All, Immigrants All programs are designed to promote a more appreciative understanding of our growing American culture through the dramatization of the contributions made by the many groups which are a part of it. What brought people to this country from the four corners of the earth? What gifts did they bear? What were their problems? What problems remain unsolved? This series dramatically presents the story of Americans All, Immigrants All. Number 1. Opening Frontiers New trails are blazed, frontiers are pushed westward, and foundations of our great democracy are laid by newcomers from across the seas. Number 2. Our English Heritage Rich experiences in self-government and basic liberties are introduced by the English in colonizing the northern Atlantic seaboard. Number three, our Hispanic heritage. The Spaniards build missions and bring Andalusian cattle and horses into the southwest. Number four, Scots, Scotch-Irish, and Welsh. Sturdy Scotch-Irish and Scots, vanguard of March to the West, settle along frontiers. The Welsh, lovers of song, discover coal and develop our minds. Number five, winning freedom. Through cooperation and willingness to sacrifice both wealth and life, colonists win independence and preserve priceless principles and ideals. Number six, the Negro. From early colonial days, the Negro, who composes one-tenth of our population, plays a large part in our economic and artistic life. Number seven, the French and Netherlanders. French fur traders and missionaries pioneer the Mississippi Valley. Netherlanders settle on Manhattan Island. French Canadians work in lumber camps and mills of New England. Diamond cutters come from Belgium, and French-speaking Swiss build up our cheese industry. Number eight, Upsurge of Democracy Frontiersmen and newcomers unite to bring about decline of aristocracy. Eastern wage earners march in the ranks of the new democracy. Number 9. The Irish Sons of old Ireland develop canals, railroads, and factories, enter the ranks of public service, and bring song, humor, and literature of a high order. Number 10. The Germans The Germans... Protestant, Catholic, and Jew, push frontiers westward, fashion the Kentucky rifle, build Switzer barn and Conestoga wagons, and develop agriculture, forestry, music, art, education, and science. Number 11. The Scandinavians. Swedes, Norwegians, and Finns settle north-central states, introducing log cabins, cooperatives, progressive dairy methods, social consciousness, gymnastics, and folk high schools. Number 12. Closing Frontiers. When there is no more good free land to settle, immigrants crowd into our cities to supply demand for unskilled labor. Number 13. The Jews. Participating in American life since early colonial days, the Jews make significant contributions to science, industry, music, literature, theater, law, medicine, and philanthropy. 14 and 15. The Slavs. The Slavs, northern and southern, succeed in making abandoned farms productive and work in our mines, steel mills, automobile factories, packing houses, and forests. Number 16. The Orientals. Chinese and Japanese bring artistic sensitivity of Far East. Chinese answer call of railroad, ranch, and factory. Japanese reclaim California swamps and develop farms. Number 17. The Italians. Early explorers and artisans come from Italy, help to build grape and wine industry, 
work in our marble quarries, raise vegetables, and help to build railroads, bridges, and highways. Number 18. Near Eastern People Armenians, Greeks, and Syrians bring philosophy, poetry, medical skill, manual skills, and unique artistic sense. Number 19. Other Peoples Hungarians, Romanians, Portuguese, Bulgarians, Lithuanians, Estonians, and Latvians bring ideas, labor, fine traditions, and aesthetic values. Number 20. Contributions in Industry Each wave of immigration contributes brain and brawn to American life. Group cooperation makes the United States leader of world industry. Number 21. Contributions in Science Our country is in the forefront of scientific progress due to brilliance and inventive genius of individuals of diverse racial and national origins. Number 22. Arts and Crafts Cultural value of artistic gifts by immigrant groups since the early colonial days is a priceless gift enriching the United States of today and tomorrow. Number 23. Social Progress Champions of human freedom, drawn from many groups, preserve and develop ideals for which the Founding Fathers fought and died. Number 24. A New England Town the New England town, founded by early settlers, changes and develops as new groups participate and function in its life. Number 25. An Industrial City A panorama of a rapidly changing industrial city, peopled by groups drawn from many nations who learn the American way of democratic life. Number 26. Grand Finale in a thrilling climax, outstanding people of various cultural backgrounds from different parts of our country summarize the story of Americans All, Immigrants All. End of section. Americans All, Immigrants All by the United States Department of the Interior Office of Education. Section 2. What brought us to the United States? Have you ever played with a magnet and a bunch of iron filings? Wasn't it amazing to see the bits of iron leap across space to reach and cling to the magnet? This story is about a magnet much larger and more powerful than you have ever imagined, one 3,000 miles long and 1,500 miles wide. A different kind of magnet, too, one that attracted not iron filings, but human beings, real, live people. A magnet that attracted every type and variety of human being alive. White people, black people, yellow people, Catholics, Protestants, Huguenots, Quakers, Baptists, Methodists, Unitarians, Jews, Spaniards, Danes, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Bohemians, Italians, Austrians, Slavs, Poles, Romanians, Russians, and I've only just begun. Farmers, miners, adventurers, soldiers, sailors, rich men, poor men, beggarmen, thieves, shoemakers, tailors, actors, musicians, ministers, engineers, writers, singers, ditch diggers, manufacturers, butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers. That magnet was America. From we the People by Leo Huberman Ever since the dawn of history, man has been on the move, restlessly seeking new environments in an effort to satisfy his physical and other needs. In the main, his wanderings have been local in character, highlighted by occasional mass migrations which have had a marked effect upon the history of the world. Among such mass migrations may be cited the migration of the Israelites from Palestine to Egypt, of the Germanic tribes into the Roman Empire, of the Saxons and Danes to England, of the Moors from the north of Africa to Spain, and of the Mongols and the Tartars from the Orient to Central Asia. Great as these migrations were, and important as their effect was on the course of history, they did not compare with the stream of humanity that began to flow to this country early in the 17th century, a stream that assumed flood proportions toward the close of the 19th century. 
Not only did the movement of peoples to our shores differ in magnitude from other migrations, it also differed in character. Whereas earlier mass migrations had consisted of the movements of tribes and distinct racial groups, the migration to the New World consisted of men of all races, nations, and creeds, a pageant of all the nations. Great Historic Freedoms what motives impelled these people to uproot themselves from their homelands and to transport themselves to a country where it was necessary to adjust themselves to a new environment and culture pattern? Many came for the love of adventure, answering the challenge of the unknown. Some were mercenary soldiers seeking new exploits. Others came because they were friendless down-and-outers and, and ne'er-do-wells, seeking a chance to begin life anew. There were still others, like the Negroes, who, although the majority did not come of their own free will, nevertheless contributed toil and labor to the making of America. Commercial enterprise and the hope of economic gain have, of course, been important factors in the peopling of our country. So also has the search for freedom. In fact, the cherished moral ideals and objectives of the immigrants laid the foundations of our democratic ideals— these great historic freedoms include 1. Religious liberty, freedom of conscience. Number 2. Personal and political liberty, freedom from political tyranny and oppression. Number 3. Economic liberty, freedom to use brain, brawn, and initiative to earn the best living possible. Number 4. Intellectual liberty, freedom of opinion, speech, assembly, and press. Number 5. Cultural liberty, freedom to establish institutions and to practice certain traditions and customs. The search for human freedom can be advanced, with historical warrant, as the basic reason for the presence in this country of about 130 million people. Without question, this is the common denominator of our democracy. Religious Liberty the vanguard of those seeking refuge from religious persecution arrived on the Mayflower and settled in Plymouth, Massachusetts. John Winthrop founded the Massachusetts Bay Colony as a refuge for Puritans. Maryland, later on, became the haven for persecuted Catholics. Rhode Island was founded by Roger Williams and his group of independent religious freethinkers. Here, the Quakers found a ready welcome, and the Jews, driven out of Europe, were allowed to build their synagogues. Toward the end of the 17th century, William Penn and his Quaker followers settled in Pennsylvania and cultivated the most friendly relationships with Indians, colonists, and new settlers alike. To Manhattan Island and South Carolina came the French Huguenots, a group of French Protestants whose guarantee of religious liberty had been revoked by the Edict of Nantes. During the 19th century, one of the early acts of the Mormons after settling in Utah was to contribute money toward building a Catholic church. Personal and Political Liberty To escape political tyranny and oppression, thousands of people left their homes and crossed the Atlantic. Following their unsuccessful rebellion against the English, the Irish came in large numbers. So did the Germans when the Revolution of 1848 failed. Likewise, the Jews left Russia toward the close of the 19th century in order to escape intolerable conditions. Among the great champions of personal liberty has been Thomas Paine, who turned the tide of victory during the Revolutionary War when he declared, This is the cause for which we are ready to suffer and to die, freedom for ourselves and the rest of the world. Another outstanding champion of personal liberty was Karl Schurz, one of the German 48ers who supported men of principles and worthy causes regardless of political affiliations. Economic Liberty Coupled with other motives, the newcomer has almost always been imbued with the hope of making a livelihood or of making profits for himself or for his employers. The first permanent settlement was established at Jamestown by the London Company to profit from gold mining and trade. New Hampshire was founded by Georges and Mason for the purpose of profit from trade and farming. 
The Carolinas were founded by a group of nobles for the same purpose. It was a similar motive which led the Swedes to settle on the Delaware, the Netherlanders to settle on Manhattan, the English to conquer New Amsterdam, and Berkeley and Carteret to settle New Jersey. It was the hope of gain which brought the French to Louisiana, and the Spaniards to Florida, New Mexico, and California. Likewise, at the close of the 19th century, it was the high wages and high standards of living which attracted the tide of people who poured in from South and Eastern Europe. Intellectual Liberty The fight of man to establish freedom of opinion, freedom of speech, and freedom of assembly is as old as man himself. For the last two hundred years, his fight for the freedom of the press has been equally important. Peter Zenger, who founded the New York Weekly Journal in 1733, registered a great triumph for the freedom of the press when he won his fight against Governor Cosby of New York. Men of strong principles and ideas have always clashed with those who would mold them to a definite pattern and so enslave their minds. In this country, the thoughts and ideas of all men may be expressed freely and analyzed by everybody. Cultural Liberty The United States has been greatly enriched as the result of cultural liberty. Here, the immigrant has often found the opportunity to practice and pass on to others those customs and traditions which have been handed down to him by his ancestors. The Christmas tree, Easter bunny, and New Year festivities are German in origin. Many of the festivals in California and the rodeo are Spanish in origin. Singing societies, folk dancing, games, cookery, and home life have been enriched by customs introduced from other lands. Immigration has indeed proved to be a wind that blows democratic ideas through the world. End of section. Section 3 of Americans All, Immigrants All by the United States Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 3. When We Came to the United States. 1536. Spaniards begin to settle in California and in the Southwest. 1565. Spaniards establish St. Augustine, oldest city in the United States. 1607. English established Jamestown, the oldest English settlement in North America. 1619. Negroes are first brought in as slaves. 1620. English pilgrims land at Plymouth Rock. 1624. Walloons, from Netherlands, settle Fort Orange, now Albany, New York. 1626. Netherlanders establish New Amsterdam on Manhattan Island. 1628. Persecuted Protestants established the Massachusetts Bay Colony. 1634. Lord Baltimore and a group of English Catholics arrive in Maryland. 1636. Roger Williams and his followers establish Rhode Island. 1636 as well. Connecticut is founded by Thomas Hooker and his religious group. 1638. Swedes and Finns settle along the Delaware River. 1639. John Mason and his followers come to New Hampshire. 1654. Twenty-three Portuguese Jews land at New Amsterdam from Brazil. 1662. Huguenots settle in Massachusetts on the present site of Oxford. 1663. English nobles, with grant from Charles II, established North Carolina. 1664. English capture New Amsterdam and rename it New York. 1664 as well. Berkeley, Carteret, and others established New Jersey. 1670. English make first permanent settlement in South Carolina. Also 1670. French fur traders and missionaries come to the Mississippi Valley. 1679. French Huguenots settle in South Carolina. 
1681, the Quakers, led by William Penn, settle Pennsylvania. 1682, the first Germans come to Pennsylvania. 1690, about 200 Scotch-Irish settle in Maryland. 1693, English helped to settle 600 German-Swiss in North Carolina. 1699, the Acadians come to Louisiana and reach as far as Biloxi in present-day Mississippi. 1700, the Scotch-Irish settle along the frontiers. 1710, first German Protestants arrive in New York. 1719, Acadians established New Orleans, Louisiana. 1720, between 1720 and 1750, 60,000 Germans come to Pennsylvania. 1732. Oglethorpe founds Georgia. 1733. German Lutherans, Italian Protestants from Piedmont, Scots, Swiss, Portuguese Jews, and English arrive in Georgia. 1737. Irish laborers come to South Carolina. 1749. About 600 Scots settle near Fayetteville, North Carolina. 1750. Over 4,300 Germans and 1,000 English and Irish arrive in Pennsylvania. 1790. Between 1790 and 1820, about 234,000 newcomers arrive. 1807. Slave trade is forbidden. 1817. 20,000 people come from Europe. 1819. First United States Passenger Act, marking beginning of systematic immigration statistics. 1842. Annual immigration first reaches 100,000. 1847. Annual immigration passes 200,000. 1845. Large German influx begins as a result of political unrest. 1847. Irish begin to come in large numbers because of famine and political oppression. 1851. Annual immigration passes 300,000. 1853. About 13,000 Chinese laborers arrive to work in the California gold mines. 1855. Castle Garden, New York, established as principal immigrant station. 1860. Slavs and Southern Europeans begin to arrive. 1870. More than 15,000 Chinese arrive to work on the railroads. 1880. Because of militarism and overpopulation in Germany, Germans again begin to arrive in large numbers. Also 1880, between 1880 and 1900, large numbers of Scandinavians arrive because introduction of machinery takes place of men on Scandinavian farms. 1881, for next 15 years, an average of nearly 500,000 arrive each year. 1882. Idiots, lunatics, and persons likely to become public charges are excluded. 1890. For next 30 years, Italians, Austrians, Hungarians, and Slavs pour into the United States to supply demand for unskilled labor. 1890. Ellis Island replaces Castle Garden as chief immigrant station. 1891. More than 1,000 Japanese arrive. Also 1891. The Office of Superintendent of Immigration is established in the Treasury Department. 1900. More than 12,000 Japanese arrive. Also 1900. Between 1900 and 1914, more than 3 million Italians and about 6 million people from Slavic countries enter. 1905, annual immigration first exceeds 1 million. 1907, 
immigration reaches all-time peak of 1,285,349. Also 1907, Immigration Commission is set up. 1917, during World War and afterwards, thousands of Mexicans crossed the border. 1919, flow of immigrants from Europe again gets underway. 1921, temporary quota law restricting immigration. 1924, permanent quota law restricting immigration to 150,000 annually. 1938, annual immigration drops to about 70,000. End of section. Americans All, Immigrants All, Section 4, by the U.S. Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 4, The Development of Our Immigration Policy. Those who have come to our shores, representing many kindreds and tongues, have been welded by common opportunity into a united patriotism. By Franklin D. Roosevelt. Long before the Revolutionary War, the colonies enacted restrictive immigration laws. Many of these laws were based on religious prejudices, which, although somewhat softened in intensity, still existed when the new nation was born. Fear and consequent hatred of foreigners and foreign influence were widely prevalent in the early years of the Republic. John Adams, Alexander Hamilton, Patrick Henry... John Jay and other prominent statesmen opposed the introduction of aliens into the political or economic life of the country. Thomas Jefferson believed that natural expansion of the existing population would be sufficient to meet the country's needs. Even George Washington in 1794 said, My opinion with respect to emigration is that, except of useful mechanics and some particular descriptions of men or professions, there is no need of encouragement. The prevailing spirit found expression in stringent naturalization laws which, however, were soon modified. The Open Door While the federal government was not unmindful of its inherent right to determine who might or might not come or remain within its borders, yet for a hundred years after the Revolutionary War ended, the country's doors were open to all who chose to enter, regardless of race, of physical, mental, or economic condition, of religious or political affiliation, or even of moral character." an era of comparative tranquility prevailed toward immigration until the 1840s when a great flood of immigrants focused hostility against the Germans and Irish, a feeling which continued until the outbreak of the Civil War. A strong movement developed in Congress in favor of regulating or even limiting immigration, but nothing came of it. In a message to Congress in 1841, President Tyler gave expression to a sentiment that grew stronger with the passing of the years. He said, We hold out to the people of other countries an invitation to come and settle among us as members of our rapidly growing family, and for the blessings we offer them, we require of them to look upon our country as their country and unite with us in the great task of preserving our institutions and thereby perpetuating our liberties. The open-door policy continued, for Congress was reluctant to abandon the time-honored belief that the United States had been dedicated at the beginning as a refuge for the oppressed people of all nations. Such legislation as was enacted during this period, including three laws for the improvement of conditions on immigrant-carrying ships, indicated the sympathetic attitude of Congress toward the incoming multitudes. Congress again favored the foreign-born by providing that aliens who had declared an intention to become citizens might enjoy the benefits of the Homestead Act of 1862. This privilege was later on destined to accelerate the settlement of public lands in the West. 
Because manpower in industry and agriculture had been depleted during the war between the states, a federal law to stimulate immigration was enacted in 1864, but it was soon repealed when peace was restored. Federal Control In the absence of federal action, several seaboard states attempted immigration control, but, after many years of effort, the Supreme Court held that Congress alone had such power. Congress assumed this power in 1882 when it reluctantly passed the first general immigration law, which provided only that idiots, lunatics, persons likely to become a public charge, and criminals other than political offenders should be denied admission. This law marked the beginning of a policy of quality selection which dominated all subsequent legislation. In 1882, because of Western opposition, Chinese laborers were excluded, a policy subsequently extended to include practically all Orientals. In 1884, a law forbidding the importation of foreign labor under contract was passed, but necessary skilled laborers and members of learned professions were exempted. Thus was Washington's opinion unwittingly honored. While Congress was developing a more stringent selective policy, immigration increased by leaps and bounds with a shift in the incoming tide from northern and western to southern and eastern Europeans. Unable to function economically, socially, or politically in their homelands, a steady stream of immigrants was spreading over the United States in answer to the demand for unskilled labor. For more than thirty years, the words of Emma Lazarus, carved on the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty, had vital meaning. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Checking the Tide the endless stream of newcomers, whose economic and political backgrounds differed from those of the earlier immigrants, led to a search for some method of checking the new immigration. With this end in view, the application of a literacy test was advocated. Presidents Cleveland and Taft had vetoed acts which contained this provision, and President Wilson twice repudiated it. However, it became part of the general law of 1917 over presidential objection. In a reference to the immigrants, President Wilson said, Some of the best stuff in America has come out of foreign lands, and some of the best stuff in America is in the men who are naturalized citizens of the United States. In the meantime, during the administration of President Theodore Roosevelt, a gentleman's agreement had been made with Japan in 1907, whereby Japan undertook to check the immigration of Japanese laborers to the United States. Immigration from Europe was largely suspended during the World War, but it rapidly increased thereafter until it was checked by the Temporary Quota Limit Law of 1921 and definitely limited by the Permanent Quota Limit Law of 1924. By this law, immigration was restricted to 150,000 annually, with quotas allotted to the various nations based on the census of 1890. In 1929, the quota based on the census of 1920 went into effect, bringing the total immigration quota to about 153,000 annually. Our Present Policy the theory that America should be a refuge for the oppressed of all nations has been quite generally honored in shaping our immigration policy. However, the United States is no longer a refuge for the oppressed people of all the world in the same way as it was in the past. Our present policy is that immigration shall be limited to a fixed number, that such immigrants shall be of good character and well disposed toward American institutions, for, in the words of former President Coolidge, "...whether one traces his Americanism back three centuries to the Mayflower, or three years to the steerage, 
is not half so important as whether his Americanism today is real and genuine. No matter on what various crafts we came here, we are all now in the same boat. Sidebar. Ourselves and Our Neighbors A recent dinner in Chicago with Catholic friends, whose parents came from Italy, a conference with a group of 25 cultured Negro men and women at Chicago University, and a visit in Des Moines, Iowa, with a close personal friend of mine, a rabbi, or a few personal experiences which show in a very real way how a relatively free society enables us to enrich our lives through fellowship with men of different races and religions. In this nation, to which more than 38 million immigrants have come during the last 120 years, the struggle of people of all races and of many creeds has been and is consciously toward the goal of human understanding and tolerance. This is an effort to elevate human welfare, irrespective of race, color, or creed, and to rise to new heights of civilization with the help of all contributions to our culture. A distinguishing characteristic of a true American is that he measures men of all races and creeds by their achievement, their honesty of purpose, and their humility. Signed, J. W. Studebaker, Commissioner of Education. End of section. Americans All, Immigrants All, Section 5 by the United States Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 5. The Immigrant and Our Economic Progress. The greatest wealth of any nation is its people. Attributed to Alan H. Eaton. To paint an adequate picture of the part which the immigrant has played in the economic progress of the United States, it would be necessary, as Rudyard Kipling says, to splash at a ten-league canvas with brushes of comet's hair. The industrial and agricultural greatness of the United States has been made possible by the brawn and brain of the immigrants and their children. Cotton. The important part played by the Negro in the agricultural life of the South is nowhere more vividly portrayed than by the story of King Cotton. Cotton production, which amounted to 85 million pounds in 1810, doubled every 10 years for the following three decades. By 1840, two-thirds of the world's cotton supply was produced in the South, and by 1850, cotton valued at $98 million was raised. In 1937 to 1938, the United States produced four times as much cotton as the rest of the world. USA, 18,946,000 bales. Brazil, as an example, 2,107,839 bales. Much of the credit for this amazing achievement goes to the Negro, whose labor has been the foundation of our cotton kingdom. Tobacco. The story of tobacco is, too, largely the achievement of Negro labor. In 1618, the Virginia planters exported 20 pounds of tobacco, which increased to 1,500,000 pounds in 1639 and reached a total of 53 million pounds in 1773. In 1937, the United States raised more than one-fourth of the world's tobacco supply. As an example, USA, 1,553 million pounds. China, 1,400 million pounds. India, 1,200 million pounds. In addition to his labor in the cotton and tobacco fields, the Negro has also helped to make profitable the production of rice and sugar. Railroads the railroad played a great part in the settling of the West. With the completion of the Erie Canal, the Irish transferred their energy and labor to building tracks for the Transcontinental Railroad. The Chinese also labored on the western end. Today, 
Irish, Chinese, Italian, and Mexican laborers helped to maintain the railroads. In 1937, almost one-half the world's miles of railways were in our country. As an example, USA, 238,539 miles. Russia, 52,425 miles. India, 43,128 miles. Automobiles Natural resources and inventive genius have enabled us to produce each year three times as many automobiles as the rest of the world put together. The work of the Poles, Slavs, Mexicans, and other groups has been an important factor in this phenomenal growth. USA, 4,808,974. Britain, 490,366. Germany, 331,894. Steel. Early colonial iron mills were operated by the Germans, whose muskets, made in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, were used by the Continental troops. In later years, the Poles and Slavs have labored in the great steel mills of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and New York. It is the endurance and physical heritage of these sturdy people that have made it possible for us to lead the world in the production of steel. USA, 50,569,000 tons. Germany, 19,536,000 tons. Britain, 12,964,000 tons. Coal. The Welsh, with the Scotch-Irish, were the first to develop our coal mines in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. These, together with the English, Irish, Germans, Poles, and Slavs, have made us the chief coal producer of the world. USA, 488,692,000 tons. Britain, 224 million tons. Germany, 146,696,000 tons. Farming. Our debt to the German farmer is great, for he made the wilderness blossom in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Missouri. To Minnesota and surrounding states came the Swedes, Norwegians, and Finns with their advanced cooperative methods, and the Danes with their dairy methods. Sturdy Czechs farmed Nebraska and Iowa. The Swiss and Wisconsin helped us to become the greatest cheesemakers in the world. The Russians brought us important seed varieties of wheat, rye, oats, buckwheat, sunflowers, and millet. Finns and French Canadians in the lumber camps of Maine and Washington have made it possible for us to produce more than 24 million board feet of lumber in one year. Portuguese are prominent in the New England fisheries, as are the Finns on the Pacific coast. The Greeks have developed a flourishing sponge industry in Florida. Italians are engaged in the marble quarries of Vermont and on truck farms of New Jersey and California. End of section. Section 6 of Americans All, Immigrants All by the United States Department of the Interior Office of Education. Section 6. Pulling Together the American Way America is made up of the cultural strains of many countries. The mere knowledge of this matchless wealth is an inspiration to anyone who knows it. Alan H. Eaton Nature has blessed this country with great natural wealth, but immigration has brought us even greater riches in the form of human resources. Andrew Carnegie, himself an immigrant, was well aware of this when he said, Take away my factories, my railroads, my ships. Take away my money. Strip me of all these things. But leave me my men, and in two or three years I will have everything back again. Priceless Gifts Transforming her immigrants as they have come, the United States has, in turn, been enriched and transformed by them. 
The immigrant has played an important part in our cultural as well as in our economic life. One immigrant, Franklin K. Lane, who became Secretary of the Interior, wrote feelingly of the contributions which the immigrant has made to American life. Their music, dirge and dance and wassail song, proud march and religious chant, and their instruments for the making of music. Their poetry, winged tales of man's many passions, folk songs and psalm, ballads of heroes and tunes of the sea, lilting scraps caught from the sky and field, or mighty dramas that tell of primal struggles of the profoundest meaning. Their art, fancies of the mind, woven in wood or wool, silk, stone or metal, rugs and baskets, gates of fine design and mottled gardens, houses and walls, pillars, roofs, windows, statues and painting, their art and handcraft. Home like familiar things, a favorite tree or fruit, an accustomed flower, a style in cookery or in costume, hands with which to work, minds that could conceive, hearts filled with home, stout hearts to drive live minds, live minds to direct willing hands. Irish song and wit, German thrift and industry, Scottish virility and genius, English love of law and order, Scandinavian honesty and love of home, Negro fervor in song and story, Mexican enjoyment of life, Indian customs and traditions, Slavic dance and folk song, neatness and thoroughness of the Netherlanders, Italian love for art and music, and philosophic tendencies of the Oriental for the beautiful, are but a few of the strands that may be found woven into our national pattern. The Art of Living Together Barriers that once existed between racial and national groups in this country are fast disappearing. Cooperative effort and healthy respect are taking their place. We are learning to understand other peoples, to understand ourselves. The newcomers brought with them an ardent desire to improve their conditions. They quickly availed themselves of the opportunity which the public school offered them. The school took the child of the exiled of Hungary, of the half-starved emigrant from the Emerald Isle, and of the hardy Norwegian, and placed them on the same bench with the offspring of those whose ancestors' bones bleached upon the fields of Lexington. The library, the church, the motion picture, and radio are also powerful educational agencies in molding the pattern of the new American. Milestones of Progress the immigrant has always been a firm devotee of the ideals of democracy, for in most cases he has suffered religious, political, military, or other oppression. Even in the United States, democracy did not begin full tilt. But just as the frontier has been conquered, so too the areas of human rights and freedoms have been extended. The abolition of slavery, universal suffrage, the grant of full rights of citizenship to women, labor legislation, and property rights have all been milestones in the onward march of democracy. The immigrant has not been unmindful of the blessings conferred upon him in this country. He has adjusted himself quickly to his new environment. In every crisis he has faithfully stood by our country and institutions. He has striven to teach his children to love and honor the land which harbors them. All human history teaches us that the price of human liberty is the continuous enlargement of that liberty. The only safe principle of democracy is justice, equity, and equal respect among all our people. Great unfinished tasks remain for us to solve. Our common loyalty must hold high the torch and pass it on, with fire unquenched, to the citizen of tomorrow. End of section. Section 7 of Americans All, Immigrants All by the United States Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 7. Are people really different? Democracy means not, I'm as good as you are, but 
You're as good as I am. Theodore Parker Immigration has made the United States the most composite nation on earth. More peoples of widely different national and racial origins have been brought together and welded into a single political, economic, and social system than anywhere else in the world. What constitutes a race? Does each race have certain hereditary characteristics which determine its mental life and social behavior? Is there a racial stock which is superior, physically, mentally, and morally, to other racial stocks? Just what differences, if any, exist between those who were born here and those who have adopted this country as their homeland? There is no such person as a Native American, nor was there ever such a person if we are to be strictly accurate. We are told that even the American Indian is an immigrant who came from far off Asia by way of the Bering Straits and Alaska. Our ancestors may have come on the Mayflower or in the steerage. We may be descended from immigrants who settled here generations ago, or we may have come directly from other lands. Yet one fact remains crystal clear. We are all immigrants. Physical Characteristics from the physical standpoint, races do have certain very definite differences that are obvious. One of the most obvious is that of color. White, black, yellow, red, brown, and yellow-brown are the colors we usually associate with certain racial types. Some of us are tall, blonde, and blue-eyed. Others are short, dark, and brown-eyed. Some people have long, narrow heads, while others have short, round heads. However, the same physical differences may be found not only between racial and national peoples, but also between individuals within the nation, tribe, or family. Mental Characteristics In answer to the contention that certain racial groups are mentally superior to others, Franz Boas, an outstanding scientist, says, No one has ever proved that a human being through his descent from a group of people must of necessity have certain mental characteristics. If we were to select the most intelligent, imaginative, energetic, and emotionally stable third of mankind, all races would be represented. Hooten, another scientist, is even more emphatic. He declares that, Each racial type runs the gamut from idiots and criminals to geniuses and statesmen. No type produces a majority of individuals from either end of the scale. There are no racial monopolies of either human virtues or vices. Carefully controlled intelligence tests given by educators and scientists to different racial groups show that, where environment and social conditions are the same, no group can claim mental superiority. In fact, it has been clearly apparent that Man everywhere is basically and fundamentally similar, and that his differences, be they physical, mental, or moral, are determined not by race so much as by the social conditions and opportunities around him. Important Findings The assimilation of different groups within the United States would seem to show that 1. Under favorable conditions of equal opportunity, all racial groups— whatever their original homeland conditions and status, are capable of rapid social change both as individuals and as groups. It can be easily shown, says one scientist, how dependent mental differences are upon social conditions. For instance, exact observations have been made on Negroes who have moved from the country to the city, and it has been shown that assimilation of these people to the behavior of the city population takes place within a few years. Likewise, it has been shown in the case of Italian immigrants that they grow to resemble the Americans in behavior the longer they have been in this country, provided they do not remain isolated. One of the most instructive illustrations of this assimilation is the ease with which children adopt the dialect and manner of expression of their environment. Number two. All groups, under the stimulus of opportunity and contact, have capacity to produce exceptional individuals of high creative ability or genius, and thus help build up and perfect human culture. 
the Nordic and Slav, the Southern European and Jew, black, white, brown, and yellow have all produced men and women of outstanding brains and genius. To confirm these statements, it is only necessary to read, in the pages that follow, the contributions of the immigrant and his descendants to American life. Research studies, conducted on an objective basis, prove that individual brilliance may be and is found in all groups. Number three. Under the influence of a common environment, physical and cultural, the offspring of different racial and national groups in a democracy tend toward a common culture with common customs and ideals. John Dewey has emphasized that, in a democratic society, individuals give freely to others of the peculiar value, essence, quality, and contribution of the group to which they belong, and receive freely the corresponding treasures of other groups, and this without violence to the complete uniqueness of the group. At birth, no individual has any culture, and so the culture he eventually acquires is the one he finds around him and is capable of assimilating. However, new conditions bring the need of new ideals and new emphasis on certain aspect of old ideals. Civilization itself is not only safeguarded, but advanced when a nation, composed of many races, finds it possible for each racial group to function creatively in building the culture of the race into the whole culture pattern. Number four. Within the framework of common political and economic institutions, a variety of cultural elements makes for a richer and more active social culture. In all history, some of the most advanced civilizations have been the product of a mixture of cultures. No great nations or civilizations have been born in isolation. Inbreeding inevitably results in one-sidedness, and eventually in stagnation and decadence. Spain was at its greatest when the mixture of peoples was at its height. England grew great because the ingredients of many racial groups ran in the Englishman's blood— the United States will continue to be great because the intermingling of many groups tends to build a culture or civilization that unifies the best of their contributions. Number five. A civilization of many different elements develops religious, social, and cultural tolerance. It also creates ability which may permit it to grow and change. End of section. Section 8 of Americans All, Immigrants All by the U.S. Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 8. Immigration from 1820 to 1936. Now a note from the narrator to you. This section is entirely data of how many people came from different countries, so if that will be too tedious for you, I encourage you to skip this section. Proceeding. Albania, 2,846. Austria and Hungary, 4,138,333. From Belgium, 155,024. Bulgaria, 65,424. Czechoslovakia, 110,928. Denmark, 333,900. Estonia, 1,839. Finland, 18,310. France, 588,023. Germany, 5,938,822. Great Britain, broken down by area. England, 2,629,335. Scotland, 732,587. Wales, 86,233. Not specified, 793,741. Now proceeding with other countries, Greece, 427,006, Ireland, 
4,588,464. Italy, 4,692,447. Latvia, 3,918. Lithuania, 7,166. Luxembourg, 854. Netherlands, 249,059. Norway and Sweden, 2,018,640. Poland, 407,366. Portugal, 254,499. Romania, 155,496. Russia, 3,343,088. Spain, 168,913. Switzerland, 292,153. Turkey in Europe, 155,568. Yugoslavia, 53,394. Other parts of Europe, 21,309, for a total from Europe of 32,434,685. China, 379,982. India, 9,704. Japan, 277,162. Turkey and Asia, 205,317. Other areas of Asia, 38,858. For Asia, complete total of 911,023. Canada and Newfoundland, 2,957,422. Mexico, 768,453. Central America, 46,919. West Indies, 438,633. South America, 117,649. Other parts of America, 40. America total, 4,329,116. Africa, 25,311. Australia and New Zealand, 53,739. Pacific Islands, 10,610. Not specified, 254,066. Total from all countries, 38,018,550. From 1931 to 1938, Departures have exceeded admissions by 203,694. End of section. Section 9 of Americans All, Immigrants All By the United States Department of the Interior, Office of Education Section 9 Our Gifts to Science and to Agriculture the broad brain and inventive genius of the immigrants and their descendants have made the United States a world leader in science and industry. In reading about this pageant of achievement, which is unique in human history, you will also learn something about the diverse racial origins of those who laid the gifts on the altar of America. Here they are, immigrants, sons of immigrants, and sons of sons of immigrants— men and women who have thrilled the worlds of science and industry, the arts and crafts, and social progress and government. The italics indicate the racial origin of each individual or a major racial group from which he is descended, although it should be kept in mind that a person's ancestors frequently include many racial strains. The achievements listed are suggestive rather than exhaustive. Medicine Use of cocaine as local anesthetic first introduced by Karl Kohler, German Jew. Ether first demonstrated to the world in surgical operation by William Morton, a Scot. 
First Successful Operation on Human Heart, Performed by Daniel H. Williams, Negro. Schick Diphtheria Test, Developed by Dr. Bela Schick, Hungarian Jew. Pioneer Work in Antiseptics by Henry Banga, Swiss, and many lives saved during World War through contributions to aseptic surgery of Alexis Carroll, French. Preventive compound for cholera and typhoid fever discovered by F.G. Novi, Slovak. Apparatus for electric blood transfusion perfected by D.J. Caligio, Italian. Charles and William Mayo, Irish, have made surgery almost as reliable a science as bookkeeping. Charles McBurney, Scotch-Irish, discovered McBurney's point as a sign for the necessity of operating for appendicitis. Discovery that the disease pellagra was due to faulty diet made by Joseph Goldberger, German Jew. Typhus and typhoid fever distinguished by Alfred Stiele, Swede. Human blood classified in different types by Karl Landsteiner, Austrian Jew. Research work in combating syphilis and yellow fever by Hideo Noguchi, Japanese. Expert on infantile paralysis and meningitis is Simon Flexner, German Jew. First removal of human ovary by Ephraim McDowell, Scott. One of the famous authorities on plastic surgery is V. Kanzangian, Armenian. World authority on venereal disease is Vecchi Victor, a Yugoslav. Edward Trudeau, French, began sanatorium treatment for tuberculosis. Clifford Beers, English Netherlander, founder of mental hygiene movement. Discovery that mosquitoes carried yellow fever made by Walter Reed, English. Malaria driven out of Panama by General William C. Gorgas, Scotch-Irish Netherlander. First hospital in colonies founded by Dr. Thomas Bond, Welsh. Physics. Our greatest electrical wizards have been Joseph Henry, Scotch-Irish, who helped to invent the telegraph, Charles Steinmetz, German-Polish, mathematical genius and electrical scientist, who had one of the world's most inventive minds, Thomas Edison, Scott Netherlander, who invented electric light bulb and phonograph. Michael Pupin, Yugoslav, who perfected tuning-in mechanism of radio. Nikola Tesla, Yugoslav, who made extensive use of electrical power possible. Vladimir Karapetov, Armenian, inventor of electrical devices. Most distinguished physicist on light rays is Albert A. Mickelson. German Jew. On X-rays, Arthur H. Compton, English. On cosmic rays, Robert Milliken, Scotch-Irish. Outstanding investigator of Rentgen Ray is Miran Kasabian, Armenian. Through work on electrotechnics, expansion of telephonic and telegraphic communication made possible by E. F. W. Alexanderson, Swede. John Crusey, Swiss, helped Edison develop electric incandescent lamp, dynamo, and phonograph. Astronomy First observatory put up by Ephraim Williams, Welsh. Many of our early-day almanacs based on astronomical studies and computations of David Rittenhouse, German-Welsh. Lick Observatory, California, and Yerkes Observatory, Wisconsin, founded by James Lick and Charles Yerkes, Germans. For pictures of many of the stars, Dorothy Klumpke, German, achieved much fame. Famous mathematician and everyday almanac maker was Benjamin Banneker, Negro, who also helped L'Enfant, French, to lay out Washington, D.C. Chemistry Ephedrine Drug used as base for cold remedies, discovered by K.K. Chen, Chinese. Adrenaline and diastase, discovered by Jokichi Takamine, Japanese. Grape sugar changed into tartaric acid by Musheg Vegoni, Armenian. 
George Washington Carver, Negro, made 145 products from peanut, 100 products from sweet potato, and 60 products from the pecan. Fermented milk product of high curative values discovered by H. M. Dudurian, Armenian. Exploration a pilot on one of Columbus's ships was Pedro Alonso, Negro. First explorers in New Mexico led by Estevanico, Moroccan. First settlers of Alabama, who accompanied De Soto in 1540, were Robles, Negro, and Ferriada, Greek. First reliable map of Virginia and Maryland made by Augustine Herman, Czech. Lewis, Welsh, and Clark, English, led the famous expedition to the Northwest. 1903 Ziegler expedition to the North Pole, led by Anthony Fiala, Czech. North Pole discovered by Robert Peary, French-English, accompanied by Matthew Henson, Negro. First to fly across South Pole was Richard Byrd, English. Other Sciences First of American geologists was William McClure, Scott. The great naturalist John J. Audubon, French-Spanish, taught us about birds of America. Many inspired to study natural sciences by Louis Agassiz, French. Henry D. Thoreau, Huguenot, was great naturalist and writer. Famous anthropologists are Franz Boas and Edward Sapir, German Jews, and Alice Ridlicka, Czech. International authority on zoology and botany is Leonhard Steiniger, Norwegian. Expert on function of cell and fertilization is Ernest Just, Negro. First botanical garden and world founded near Philadelphia by John Bartram, Welsh, early in 18th century. Public garden established in Georgia by General Oglethorpe, English, served as our first agricultural experiment station. Scientific breeding of plants, demonstrated by Luther Burbank, English-French Netherlander Scott. Philosophers Famous philosophers, William James, Welsh-English, John Dewey, Irish, Santayana, Spaniard, Jiddu Krishnamurti, Hindu. Agriculture First vineyard in our country was set out by Jean-Jacques Dufour, Swiss. Oranges, olives, dates, and grapes were brought to California by Fray Junipero Serra, Spaniard. Fig cuttings were imported by Nedetovich of Fresno, Yugoslav. Wild strawberry developed into large table variety by Johann Schwerdkopf, German, who came to Long Island before Revolutionary War. Alfalfa seed, known as lucerne, brought to Minnesota and developed by Wendelin Grimm, German, in 1858. Hardy alfalfa for prairies of Northwest, brought from Siberia and Turkestan by Niels Hansen, Dane. Mower and reaper invented by Cyrus McCormick, Scotch-Irish. Simple tests to determine whether soil needs nitrogen, phosphates, or potash, devised by George Hoffer. German. Pasteurization introduced by Julius Moldenhauer, Dane. Orange that will stay on tree for months after ripening, propagated by Lu Gim Gong, Chinese. Honey industry revolutionized by Frank Yeager, Yugoslav. Early cooperative creamery at Clark's Grove, Minnesota, organized under leadership of Hans Jensen, Dane. First to find Trachina spiralis in hogs and hookworm in cats was Joseph Leidy, German. International Institute of Agriculture, established by David Lubin, Polish Jew. End of section. Section 10 of Americans All, Immigrants All By the U.S. Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 10 our gifts to industry and commerce. Inventions First clock in America, constructed to strike the hours, built by Benjamin Banneker, Negro, in 1790. 
Early Flour Milling Machinery by Oliver Evans, Welsh. Iron Comb, made by a Negro to help cotton pickers, gave Eli Whitney, English, idea for his cotton gin. Screw Propeller and Revolving Turret on Battleship, invented by John Erickson, Swede. First patent to a Negro granted to Henry Blair for corn harvester in 1834. Comb Making Machinery Built by Nathaniel Jones, Welsh. First Zipper Fastener, invented by Gideon Sunbake, Swede. Green Coloring Matter Used in Our Paper Dollar, invented by Dr. Seropian, Armenian. Machine for Lasting Shoes, built by Jan Matzeliger, Haitian, in 1852. Self-starter automobile clutch invented by Victor Bendix, Swede. Also developed four-wheel brakes and carburetor. Steam boiler furnace, electrical air brakes, and incubator invented by Granville T. Woods, Negro. Inventor of carborundum was E.G. Acheson, English. Sewing machine invented by Elias Howe, English, in 1846. Lubricating cup, used on locomotives and marine engines, invented by Elijah J. McCoy, Negro. Discovery of artificial rubber by Father Newland of Notre Dame, Belgian, broke the British hold on rubber. Induction motors, invented by Nikola Tesla, Yugoslav. Co-discoverer of process for making luminous paints was John Soshaki, Ukrainian. Fireproof stairs and library book stacks invented by Niels Polson, Dane. Stilson wrench, invented by Daniel Stilson, Swede, in 1875. Bakelite, a substitute used for ivory and bone in making toilet articles, invented by Leo Bakeland, German. He discovered Velox, a paper used by photographers, and made several other discoveries through experimenting with the electrolytic cell. One of our earliest elevators was built by Dr. Niels Collins, Swede, a Philadelphia pastor. The condenser used in radios and electric motors is the result of work done by Alexander Georgiev, Bulgarian. Numerous inventions of a wide and varied nature in connection with steam turbines were developed by Oskar Jungren and by Carl Soderberg, Swedes. Huge machines used for knitting are the invention of Ladislaus Robachinsky, Armenian. Outstanding typewriter designer is Carl Gabrielson, Swede. Airbrake, invented by George Westinghouse, English Netherlander. Scientific divining rod used in electromagnetic method of locating metal ore, petroleum, and other minerals, devised by Hans Lundberg and Carl Sundberg, Swedes. In inventing telephone transmitter and motion picture projector, Edison, Scott Netherlander, helped by Emil Berliner, German Jew. Accuracy gauges from which precision machinery is made, invented by Carl Johansson, Swede. Process for making artificial stone, invented by Michael Timofeev, Ukrainian. Pioneer in radio work and sound motion pictures was Lee de Forest, French-English. Transportation First steamboat built and taken down Ohio and Mississippi by Nicholas Roosevelt, Netherlander. First elevated railroad in New York City was built by Jose Francisco de Navarro, a Spaniard, in 1878. First demonstration of steam railroad in practice by John Stevens, English, in 1825. The Clermont, our first commercially successful steamboat, built by Robert Fulton, Irish. Greatest of Clipper Ships, Rainbow and Sea Witch, built by John Griffith, Welsh. Wagons and Automobiles, produced by Studebaker Brothers, German. Inventor of modern suspension bridge was John Roebling, German, who built beautiful Brooklyn Bridge. The Niagara Cantilever Bridge for heavy railroad traffic, invented by Charles Schneider, German. The Northwest opened up by railroad builder James J. Hill, Scotch-Irish. 
Transatlantic Flyer, Charles Lindbergh, and Airship Commander, Charles Rosendahl, Swedes. Manufacturing Window glass, manufactured by Caspar Wistar, German, in 1739. Decorative stoves and glass of highly prized nature, manufactured in 18th century by Heinrich Stiegel, German. The New England cotton mills established by Samuel Slater, English. First to unite all processes for manufacturing finished cloth in one factory was Patrick Jackson, Irish. Art of making gunpowder perfected by Eleuther Dupont, French. Great steel works of Pittsburgh founded by Andrew Carnegie, Scott, assisted by William Jones, Welsh. Iron and steel industries of Pueblo, Colorado, established by Daniel Jones, Welsh. Famous pioneer organ builder, Matthias Muller, a Dane. Pianos and other instruments by Steinway, Neba, Weber, Wurlitzer, Gemunder, Germans. Steel manufactured by Charles Schwab, German. Sugar produced by Havemeyer, German. Food products by Heinz and Fleischmann, Germans. World noted symbols made by Zildigian, Armenian. Airplane builders are Igor Sugorsky, Russian, Balanka, Italian, Douglas, Scott, Boeing, German, and Curtis, English German. Communication The telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell, Scott. The telegraph was invention of Joseph Henry and Samuel Morse, Scotch Irish. Steam cylinder printing press, making possible our great daily newspapers, was brainchild of Robert Ho, English. Erie Canal, built by DeWitt Clinton, Irish Netherlander. Long distance telephone and wireless telegraphy made possible by Michael Pupin, Yugoslav. Inventor of wireless switch was Fritz Lowenstein, German Jew. New device for transmitting radio photographs by Arthur Korn, German Jew. Loudspeaker invented by Peter Jensen, Dane. Swarkin, Russian, pioneered in television. First printing press imported to California by Augustin Zamorana, Spaniard. Commerce One of the largest cotton gins owned by Scott Bond, Negro. Our leading industrialists include Astor, Vanderbilt, and Rockefeller, Germans, Julius Rosenwald, Chicago mail-order executive, German Jew, Alfred Knudsen, Dane, automobile manufacturing executive. Leading rug merchants are Karagusian, Gulbenkian, Kalekian, and Pushman, Armenians. Leading linen and lace merchants are Maluk, Kassab, Bardwil, Jabara, Mamari, and Boutros, Syrians. Largest raiser of orchids and specialist in cacti is J. A. Manda, Yugoslav. First American circus opened in Baraboo, Wisconsin in 1854 by Ringling Brothers, German. Virginia tobacco trade founded by Augustine Herman, Czech. Gas first introduced in 1830 by Edward Jones, Welsh, in Boston. Mining First oil well drilled at Titusville, Pennsylvania by Edwin Drake, English, in 1859. In Texas, oil was first struck by Anthony F. Lucas, Yugoslav. Coal in Pennsylvania first discovered by William Jones, Welsh. Pioneer miner of Colorado was Vaso Chekovic, Yugoslav. First California gold found on ranch of John Sutter, German-Swiss. Eminent mining industrialists include Simon and Daniel Guggenheim, Swiss Jews, and Adolf Lewinson, German Jew. Banking Leading bankers include J. Pierpont Morgan, Welsh, Nathan Strauss, Felix Warburg, Jacob Schiff, Otto Kahn, and James Speyer, German Jews. 
Charles G. Dawes, English, Amadeo Giannini, Italian, and Jesse Jones, Welsh. Building First American iron sea-going steamship built in 1859 by José Francisco de Navarro, Spaniard, who also laid foundation of cement business in this country. Panama Canal, built by General Gothels, Netherlander. George Washington Bridge, built by Othmar Anman, Swiss. Manhattan Bridge in New York, an interstate bridge connecting Philadelphia and Camden, built by Leon Moisef, Russian. Hetch Hetchy Water System, from Sierra Nevada to San Francisco, built by Michael O'Shaughnessy, Irish. Ralph Mojeski, Polish Jew, Chairman, Board of Engineers, San Francisco, Oakland Bridge. Peter Demyanov, Russian, Railroad Builder. End of section. Section 11 of Americans All, Immigrants All by the U.S. Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 11. Our Gifts to the Arts and Crafts. Literature. Outstanding novelists have been James Fenimore Cooper, English-Swedish, Oliver W. Holmes, English-Netherlander, Mark Twain, English, William Dean Howells, Welsh-Irish-English-German, Mary Wilkins Freeman, English, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Irish, Theodore Dreiser, German, James W. Johnson, Negro, Frank Norris, English, Booth Tarkington, English, Fanny Hurst, Edna Ferber, and Ludwig Lewison, German Jews, Jacob Rius, Dane, Louis Adamic, Yugoslav. Our leading poets include Longfellow, Lowell, and Whittier, English, Edgar A. Poe, Scotch-Irish-English, Walt Whitman, English-Netherlander, Sidney Lanier, French, Eugene Field, English, Robert Frost, Scotch-English, Edwin Markham, English, James W. Riley, Netherlander-English, Carl Sandburg, Swede, Edna St. Vincent Millay, English-French, Joaquin Miller and Joyce Kilmer, Germans, Louis Untermeyer, German-Jew, and Arthur Guterman, Austrian-Jew, Christopher Morley, Irish, Phyllis Wheatley and Paul Dunbar, Negroes. Pioneer heroism immortalized by O. E. Rolveg, Norwegian, Good Literature Circulated in Humble Homes by P. F. Collier, Irish, Historian, Writer, and Lecturer, William Hendrik van Loon, Netherlander. Music Father of our orchestras and founder of Handel and Haydn Society was Gottlieb Graupner, German. First organ builder and maker of spinets was Gustav Hesselius, Swede. Our first important composer was Ernst Bloch, Swiss Jew. Carry Me Back to Old Virginia, composed by James Bland, Negro. Johnny Comes Marching Home, composed by Patrick Gilmore, Irish. Old Folks at Home, by Stephen Foster, Scotch-Irish. An Italian, Campanini, was first director and leader of Metropolitan. Gatti Cassessa, Italian, famous director of Metropolitan. Organizer of Flanzelli Quartet was Alfred Ponchon, Swiss. Famous composers include Victor Herbert, Irish, Edward McDowell, Scott, John Philip Sousa, Portuguese, Percy Granger, Australian, Eugene Goosens, English, Howard Hansen, Swede, William Grant Still, Negro, Daniel Prothero, Welsh, Sigmund Romberg, German Jew, George Gershwin and Irving Berlin, Russian Jews, Alma Gluck, Romanian, Rudolf Frimmel, Czech. Outstanding conductors include Gabrilovich, Russian Jew, Walter and Klemperer, German, 
Kusevitsky and Smolens, Russian Jews, Stokowski, Polish, Ormany and Rapi, Hungarians, Gantz, Swiss, Koshets, Ukrainian, Zelati, Russian, Bush, Dane, Kindler, Netherlander, Damrosch, German, Radzinski, Yugoslav, Victor Kolar, Czech. Leading violin players of worldwide fame are Elman, Heifetz, Zimbalist, Russian Jews, and Yehudi Menuhin, Romanian Jew. Essay, Belgian, Devonk, Czech, Pridakovich, Ukrainian. Famous pianists include Rachmaninoff, Russian, Iturbi, Spaniard, Hanti, Hungarian. Leading flutist is Kalamajos, Greek. Noted xylophonist is Y. Hiraoka, Japanese. Among the great concert artists are Sophie Breslau, Russian Jew, Lottie Lehman, German, Rosa Reza, Italian Jew, Schumann Heink, Austrian, John Charles Thomas, Welsh, and Paul Robeson, Jules Bledsoe, Marian Anderson, Roland Hayes, Negroes. Art Father of American painting was Benjamin West, English. Portraits of Washington, Adams, Jefferson, and Madison by Charles Gilbert Stewart, Scott. Washington Crossing the Delaware by Emanuel Lutze, German. Famous portraits by John Copley, Irish. Famous etchings by Joseph Pennell, English-Irish. Artist's Mother by James McNeil Whistler, Scotch-Irish. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot by Malvin Johnson, Negro. Return of Prodigal Son by Henry Mosler, German Jew. Gast and Portraits by John S. Sargent, English-Italian. Autumn Oaks by George Innes, Scott. Conquerors, Building of Panama Canal, by Joseph Lye, Norwegian. Resurrection of Lazarus, by Henry O. Tanner, Negro. Still Life, by Yasu Kuniyoshi, Japanese. First modernist in America was Arthur Davies, Welsh. Corrupt Tweed Ring in New York City smashed by cartoons of Thomas Nast, German. Leader in landscape painting, Frederick Detwiller, Swiss. Master of Miniatures, Malfi Hathelrius, Dane. Famous frescoes in National Capital by Brumidi, Italian. Illustrator of folk tales and fairy stories, Willie Pogany, Hungarian. Journalistic cartoons by Harrison Fisher, Czech. Sculpture. Puritan, Shaw Memorial, and other statues by Saint Gardin, Irish French. Memory and Lincoln statues by Daniel Chester French, English. Work on Stone Mountain, Georgia, and Mount Rushmore, South Dakota by Gutson Borglum, Dane. Pioneer Mother at Kansas City by Femester Proctor, Canadian. The Sower on the Nebraska State Capitol by Lee Lawry, German. Statues of Indians by Ivan Mestrovich, Yugoslav. McKinley Monument by Haig Patigian, Armenian. Italian sculptors who helped adorn national capital were Franzoni, bronze clock with statue of Storia on top, Valperti, emblematic eagle, Amateus, bronze doors, Calcici, Statue of Liberty Proclaiming Peace, Trentanova, Per Marquette Statue, Vincente, Indian Chief, Bishiki. Architecture Skyscraper developed by Louis Henry Sullivan, Irish-French, German. Fenoya Hall, Boston, designed by John Smilbert, Scott. Vieux Carré, New Orleans, laid out by Adrien de Poget, French. Foremost architect in stone was Henry Richardson, English. Frank Lloyd Wright, Welsh, harmonized buildings with surroundings. 
St. Patrick's Cathedral, New York City, built by Joseph Savak, a Czech. Prominent naval architect is William Hofgard, Dane. City planning by Eliel Sarinian, Finn. Bertram Goodhue, Scott English, developed and refined Gothic in public buildings. Folger Library and Pan American Building in Washington by Paul Kret, Belgian. Banks and Office Buildings by Stephen Voorhees, Netherlander. Church Architecture by Ralph Cram, German, and Charles McGuinness, Irish. Motion Pictures Outstanding Motion Picture Stars Antonio Moreno, Spaniard Luis Rainier, Austrian Charles Lawton and Ronald Coleman, English Francis Lederer, Czech Jean Herschelt, Dane Pola Negri, Pole Anna Sten, Ukrainian Laura Laplante, Yugoslav Leading Producers Meyer, Lasky, Warner, Russian Jews and Goldwyn, Polish Jew Pioneers of industry were D.W. Griffith, Welsh Zucker and Fox, Hungarian Jews and Lowe, German Jew Technique of Cinematography Modernized by Vorkopek, Yugoslav Theater Pioneer of Modern American Theater, Augustin Daly, Irish Geniuses of the theater include Belasco, Portuguese Jew Fromans, Schuberts, Selwyn, Warfield, Hammerstein, German Jews and Nazimova, Russian Jew John Drew, Irish, Richard Mansfield, Julia Marlowe, and Barrymore's, English, Paul Robeson, Negro, the magician Houdini, Hungarian. Journalism New York Weekly Journal founded by Peter Zenger, German, in 1733. New York Tribune founded by Horace Greeley, Scotch-Irish. Publisher of St. Louis Post-Dispatch and New York World was Joseph Pulitzer, Hungarian Jew. First Great Newspaper Syndicate established by S.S. McClure, Irish. Magazine famous as a militant muckraker founded by P.F. Collier, Irish. First Modern Newspaper, the New York Morning Herald, founded in 1835 by James G. Bennett, Scott. New York Times, founded by Henry Raymond, Scott, and George Jones, Welsh. Chain of Newspapers, founded by James Scripps, English. Chain of Newspapers, founded by William Randolph Hearst, Scotch-English. Editor of a ladies' magazine, Edward Buck, Netherlander. End of section. Section 12 of Americans All, Immigrants All by the U.S. Department of the Interior, Office of Education. Section 12. Our Gifts to Social Progress and Government. Declaration of Independence, written by Thomas Jefferson, Welsh. Signed by one Swede, three Irish, four Scots, five Welsh, five Scotch-Irish, thirty-eight English, with John Morton, Swede, casting deciding ballot. The thirteen colonies were christened the United States of America by Thomas Paine, English. Social Welfare Our first social reformer was Robert Owen, Welsh. First one to make use of music in social work was William van der Waal, Netherlander. Founder of Red Cross, Clara Barton, English. Founder of Chicago's famous Hull House was Jane Addams, English. Slums attacked by Jacob Rius, Dane, in How Other Half Lives. Welfare Library on Ellis Island, organized by Rev. John Queeton, Latvian. Anti-Saloonist and Feminist Carrie Chapman Catt, English-German. Atlanta School of Social Work, directed by Forrester Washington, Negro. Lillian Wald, German Jew, a social welfare leader. Famous home for boys, Father Flanagan, Irish.
Government and Politics Two-thirds of our presidents, including Washington, are of English descent. Martin Van Buren and Herbert Hoover, German. Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin Roosevelt, Netherlanders. Jefferson, Madison, John Adams, John Q. Adams, Harrison and Garfield, Welsh. Monroe, Hayes, Grant, Wilson and McKinley, Scots. Among our leading statesmen were Hamilton, Calhoun, Webster, Jefferson Davis, Scotch-Welsh, James Blaine, Chauncey Depew, Stephen Douglas, mainly Scots, Patrick Henry, Scot-English-Welsh. Leading civil service and tariff reformer was Karl Schurz, German. Iron Puddler, who became Secretary of Labor, James J. Davis, Welsh. First Governors of Delaware, John McKinley, Georgia, John Houston, Illinois, John Boyle, Kansas, James Denver, Louisiana, William Claiborne, all Irish or Scotch-Irish. Present Governor of New York, H. H. Lehman, German Jew, of Illinois, Henry Horner, German Jew. First Governor General of Florida, Bouquet, Swiss. First President of the Republic of Texas, Sam Houston, Scott. Tammany Society, founded in 1789 by William Mooney, Irish, as protest against attempt of wealthy Tories to prevent soldiers and others from voting. First Secretary of Treasury under Jefferson, responsible for arranging Louisiana Purchase, was Albert Gallatin, Swiss. First to fight for conservation of our forests was Karl Schurz, German. Philanthropy Astor Library, now part of New York Library, founded by John Jacob Astor, German, in 1848. 4,000 Negro schools founded by Julius Rosenwald, German Jew. Chautauqua Movement, begun by Louis Miller, German. Gifts during Panic of the 90s, Penny Meals during World War, Food Ships to Palestine, and Milk Fun by Nathan Strauss, Austrian Jew. $42 million gift to General Education Board by John D. Rockefeller, German. Libraries founded throughout United States by Andrew Carnegie, Scott. Funds raised to bring Statue of Liberty from France by Joseph Pulitzer, Hungarian Jew. Appreciation of arts and literature stimulated by Edward Bach, Netherlander. Boy Scouts of America helped by Jacob and Mortimer Schiff, German Jews. Six million dollars to Princeton University by H. C. Frick, German. Colgate University, founded by William Colgate, English. One hundred twenty-two thousand dollars to Fisk University by James Burris, Negro. Foundations for opportunities to study abroad and to promote well-being of mankind. Established by Simon and Daniel Guggenheim, Swiss Jews. Champions of Human Liberty Protest Against Slavery by Pastorius, German Author of Common Sense, The Crisis, and Public Good was Thomas Paine, English. Powerful leaders against slavery were John Russworm, Benjamin Banneker, David Walker, Harriet Tubman, William Brown, William Still, Samuel Ward, Frederick Douglass, Negroes. Peter Zenger, German, defended by Andrew Hamilton, Scott, registered great triumph for freedom of press when he won his fight against Governor Crosby of New York. National Defense Minutemen roused by Paul Revere, Huguenot. Drillmaster of Continental Armies, who helped to plan West Point, was Frederick von Steuben, German. $600,000 advanced to Congress and subsidies negotiated from France and the Netherlands by Chaim Solomon, Polish Jew. Father of American cavalry was General Casimir Pulaski, Pole. First to lose life in Revolutionary War was Crispus Attucks, Negro. First Commodore of Navy was John Barry, Irish. 
naval hero John Paul Jones, Scott. Five million dollars contributed toward War of 1812 by Stephen Gerard, French. Famous privateer who abolished corporal punishment in the Navy was Uriah Levy, Jew. British defeated on Lake Erie by Captain Perry, Scotch-Irish. Labor First President of American Federation of Labor, who improved living standards of workers, was Samuel Gompers, English Jew. Leader of CIO, John L. Lewis, Welsh. Organizer of coal miners, John Mitchell, Welsh. President of AF of L, William Green, English Welsh. Leader of Amalgamated Clothing Workers, Sidney Hillman, Lithuanian Jew. Religious Work Participating in Washington's inaugural was Rabbi Sykes, Portuguese Jew, one of our greatest clergymen, Jonathan Edwards, Welsh. Leader in Welfare and Religious Work, Huey Kin, Chinese. First Protestant missionary to West Indies was George Leal, former Negro slave. Professor of Theology at Hartford Seminary, N.Y. Anigian, Armenian. Authority on Early Church History is Professor La Plena, Albanian. Education. First book on pedagogy, published in 1770 by Christopher Duck, German. Harvard University, named after John Harvard, English. Yale University by Elihu Yale, Welsh. William and Mary by James Blair, Scott. Brown University by Morgan Edwards and Samuel Jones, Welsh. New York University by Gallatin, Swiss. Tuskegee Institute by Booker Washington, Negro, world-famed educator. Williams College by Ephraim Williams, Welsh. One of incorporators of Columbia University was Rabbi Sykes, Portuguese Jew. Hunter College by Thomas Hunter, Irish. Creighton University, Omaha, by Creighton Brothers, Irish. Princeton University, founded by Scottish Presbyterians, Barnard College, founded by Annie Nathan Meyer, German Jew. Infant School, introduced in 1816 by Robert Owen, Welsh. First German Kindergarten, introduced in Wisconsin in 1855 by wife of Carl Schertz, German. A Primer, first book produced in Pennsylvania, written by Franz Pastorius, German, headmaster of first school in Germantown. College of Journalism at Columbia University, founded by Joseph Pulitzer, Hungarian Jew. School of Mines, founded by Adolf Lewison, German Jew. First English Kindergarten, founded in Boston in 1860 by Elizabeth Peabody, English. Father of modern American education was Horace Mann, English. World-famous Orientalist P.K. Hitti, Syrian. One of foremost educators was Henry Suzalo, Yugoslav. Angelo Patri, Italian, counsels parents and children. One of our greatest economists was Thorstein Veblen, Norwegian. Law and Order First Chief Justice of Supreme Court was John Jay, French. Present Chief Justice, Charles Evan Hughes, Welsh. One of the foremost authorities on international law is Stephen Lattice, Greek. Finns work the iron ore fields of northern Minnesota. Netherlanders and Poles developed woodworking trades of Michigan. Italians, Portuguese, Greeks, and Swiss have built up the grape and wine industry of California. Greek candy makers. Mexicans and Japanese in beet fields of Colorado, Nebraska, and California. Italians, Poles, and Slavs in meatpacking, textile, and building industries. End of section. Section 13 of Americans All, Immigrants All by the United States Department of the Interior, 
Office of Education. Section 13. Dear Listener. April 15, 1939. Dear Listener. This booklet is presented in sincere appreciation of your interest in Americans All, Immigrants All radio series. I am deeply grateful for your patience in the face of delay in getting this booklet to you. When you read it, however, I feel you will be repaid, for no effort has been spared in making it worthy of being read and treasured as a permanent record of the Americans All, Immigrants All radio series. Since the programs themselves could give you only a general panorama of the many colorful and significant contributions made by peoples of many races and lands to the building of our nation, you will no doubt wish to be in a position to investigate for yourself some of the things which have impressed you as most interesting. The suggested readings and sources for more material, given in the booklet and the special list, should help you in doing this. If this office can be of further service, please feel free to call upon us. As an enthusiastic listener of Americans All, Immigrants All, you will no doubt be glad to learn that these radio programs have been perpetuated in the form of recordings which can be used on phonographs and on radio playback equipment. You may wish to give this news to teachers, club leaders, and others who would have a natural interest in promoting broader tolerance through understanding. You may also wish to put into their hands the enclosed reference list. Thanking you again for your abiding interest, I am cordially yours, J. W. Studebaker, Commissioner of Education. This is the end of Americans All, Immigrants All. Thank you for listening.